Troy, how are you today? I'm Sophia Soto with the Nerds of Color. I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for sitting down to talk with us. We are so excited to ask you all about the new season of the Goldberg. Season is just hilarious. You guys are really doing such a great job. Still, eight years later, eight seasons later. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, we've been working really hard on it. Now we're uh, we're wrapped. We wrapped up. So hopefully, we get season nine. Fingers crossed. You guys have the fan base for it. Um, you actually just let us into our first question. I was going to say you just recently wrapped. Um, what was that moment like for you? Um, it was an honor to wrap in such a difficult year. You know, we a lot of um, stuff we had to do this year. You know, we had to get tested like every single day. Um, there wasn't really any holdups with the whole Corona thing. We, we got through it uh, really well. Um, yeah, they did a great job of keeping us safe and, you know, still maintaining, you know, our, our show and, 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 and how it is. And I think we did a really good job. I mean, it was, we were one of the first shows back. So it was really, uh, it was really cool. Yeah, I can imagine it was definitely a bigger challenge for you guys and to wrap it and be successful like that is really an accomplishment and yeah. a testament and a testament yes. to the show. Yes, yes. It was just, uh, we're very grateful, very, very grateful, you know, because we, uh, season seven shut like that. So we never did, did the final episode for season seven, you know? Yeah. So the fact that we came back and we were able to finish 22 episodes without yeah. any hangups, um, except like one little thing. Um, it was really, we're, we're all just very grateful. What can you sort of tease about what's coming up for these next few episodes? Um, well, Joanne and Barry, you know, my new girlfriend, Joanne Schwartz, uh, she, um, you know, they're finding their footing right now. Um, Jeff and Erica are in their own little relationship thing. Um, so there's a couple, the mainly focuses on the last like three to four episodes, I believe, focuses on Erica and Jeff's relationship. So you got to stay in tune to watch that. That was a pretty big shakeup. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah. definitely got audiences shocked. Um, you guys have paid tribute to so many classic films over the years from, you know, Vacation to Ferris Bueller. Do you guys, do you have a favorite that you've done? And then is there one that you want to do in the future? Hopefully season nine, fingers crossed. Hopefully Ferris Bueller for sure, because uh, season two, like the Goonies was really cool. That was like the first homage we, we paid to season one, but Ferris Bueller was like, it was so cool. I had never watched the movie. I never um, broke it down with anyone. And then I, I broke it down with our producer, Vernon Davidson. And, you know, he would, he's from Chicago. So he would like point out things and, you know, he just made it such a great experience. And then when we did shot for shot, you know, with all the Ferris stuff and the John Hughes inserts and, you know, Wendy in the same wardrobe, me in the same wardrobe, it was just so much fun. And then um, I always wanted to do big. Yes, that would but be a I, good one. I think Sean's getting a little bit maybe too old to do the big thing because he's not as young as he was before. But I always wanted them to incorporate big because big's like my favorite 80s movie. So, yeah. I have to say that last scene in the Ferris Bueller episode with you guys on the stage at the, at the homecoming with you oh, singing. Well, Oh and my gosh, shows. what a great shot. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. It came out great. Do you have a favorite 80s trend that you'd want to bring back in 2021? Um, I mean, the music, the music, yeah. the, the vibrant fashion, which I think is still here. But um, I mean, the music of that era was just so so good but um and i think like you know it's cyclical right it's like a, it's like a full circle so i mean i still think we see a lot of 80s stuff when the goldbergs was coming back and when we just first started in 2013 80s stuff was like really hot like it was like the thing and like i think that's one of why our show clicked too so well is because the the time that it came in there was even just thinking of how long ago the show started yeah, it's crazy, and the show still takes back 
to the 80s like the audience is transported back from the music to the fashion and I know yeah. I love I love listening to the music on your show I'm like I sing along all the time it's great and this season especially um the the tracks that we're using at the end of the episodes I I love so it's getting um groovier and funkier and it's it's cool to see that we're still incorporating all that music in our episodes and you know keeping it in the 80s yeah exactly and it's it's you know for families watching it's something that everyone in the family can enjoy and also a way like parents can introduce their kids to this sort of stuff and be like you know it was 33 years from 1980 23 years from 1989 i did the math there boom wow. You're better at math than me because you did that a lot quicker than I would have ever. <laughs> um, family obviously is such an important theme in this show. What message do you hope families get from watching the shows together? It's a good question. Um, I think just, you know, every family is so dysfunctional and we all have our hangups and we all have our, you know, the different dynamics and the relationships that we have and that we build through the years. And, you know, we're all human and it's just the Goldberg shows that, I mean, we're obviously on a different scale, you know, the way we, but, but everyone, everyone can relate to that. That's what makes us so, you know, relatable and it's success. Why one of the other many reasons why we're so successful is because we, you know, we're, we're not making anything glamoury. We're not like, you know, we're not, we're just who we are on the show. We're the Goldbergs and, you know, we act erratic and irrational. And a lot of people act like that. A lot of families act like that. Um, and it just, it puts in a, a perspective, you know, at the end of the day, family is all we got. And, you know, we got to always love each other and, you know, we're going to have our difficulties, but, you know, we always come together at the end, act three. So that's the Goldbergs. And that's what makes it a very uh, close show, I think, to home. And I think every family watching can like point to at least one family member and be like, we have one of those in our family. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Definitely. Um, do you have a favorite Barry moment, either due to the comedy aspect or the meaning behind it? I know that's probably a hard question because there's some pretty great ones. Well, I mean, Big Orange was always my favorite Barry, I think, episode. Um, I just think it puts him in, uh, just that episode was just how he loses that shirt and just the way he reacts to it and just how passionate he is about that shirt. It's just like, you know, he's just such a passionate human being. And I just think that that episode really um, sums sums him up like really well. That's like the one that I would I I go back to and call me when you get there. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that one really is just <laughs> so funny. You guys did such a great job with that, Thank and I you. think it's funny in uh, the big orange one. They show, I believe, a montage in the beginning of him wearing the shirt in like all these different episodes. And it's like, you don't even realize as a viewer, it's like, oh my gosh, it was a really funny montage to see him wearing it in every episode. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's close to that. Yeah. Well, on top of Big Orange, there's obviously Big Tasty's raps. How long does it take for you to learn those raps? And do you have a favorite? Well... Um, Ferris wheel is my favorite because it was the first one. So Ferris wheel is my favorite. Um, it takes a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty random, you know, like the to recite and those lyrics, but you know, it always helps because they have a teleprompter and that helps, but that does, that can only help so much because you have to know the cadence and, you know, the pattern and the way it, to deliver it, but it's always fun, you know, learning them. Um, the hardest one I had to learn was the Billy Joel episode where I play like Barry Joel and um, we, we start the fire with what, the name of that. I forgot yeah, the name. We didn't start the fire. Yep. And he does the talent show. Yep. <laughs> that was the hardest one to memorize. It was just so, but I had so much fun. Um, and it's like a performance too. Like you put on, you put on a performance when you do big teeth. 
I had to work on that one. That one was that one wasn't easy. That one's really random. Um, but I had a blast. Like when I did it and got it down, and I was like, I remember it was on a Thursday, and I had like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, to like look them over, look them over, look them over, and then like I just it was so it, it flowed. It was so so great. It was so nice to do, and uh, that's the one that was the hardest I've ever had to learn for sure. It was definitely it's funny that like it's instantly recognizable too like I knew exactly which one you were talking about because it's like it was like a legit performance with that yeah I'm in all black I'm at the yes the table, table. <laughs> yeah. like the music video yeah exactly and the fire at the end, yeah, the fire yes. at the end. so yeah. funny and my Would favorite you... director was doing that episode too Jay Chandra Shekhar he does a lot of our episodes and yeah. It's always great to do that in front of your favorite director, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I feel like the the crew behind you, like, always makes a difference, too. And you guys yeah. all seem so close on set and, like, such a great family. So I can imagine that vibe is like that when you're filming. For sure. Um, yeah. What would you, would you say you're more similar or different than Barry in real life? Um, well, I'm similar with him in the fact that I'm very passionate. Um, I love my sports. Um, he's a, he's more emotional, I think, than me. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, I have some, of course, I have some similarities to Barry, you know, um, but not also I'm putting on a huge act, you know, the way he gets <laughs> upset about things and the way he's just so, he's so in his body and like just out of control. You know, he's, he's a little bit more out of control than I am. Um, but that's what, that's what, he's an extreme, you know, he's a total extreme. So it's just so much, so much fun to do that, you know, in the physical, the, the physicality of him and the way he yeah. expresses himself is another level, but I'm very expressive myself. So, but it takes me to that other level. If you could take anything from set, what would you pick and why? Oh, if I could take anything from set, what would I pick? That's a good question. Um, I would take Murray's chair. Yes, good one. That's a really good one. Comfortable. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> great. That's a really good one. Um, the show obviously brings audiences back to the 80s, like we mentioned before. Is there anything you wish you could see Barry react to that wasn't part of the 80s? Um, Barry doesn't do anything with technology in the show. So, you know, that'll be a whole new ball game. Um, but that's what makes him so much fun to play is he's never with technology, you know, and you have to deal with it. <laughs> exactly you get a break from yeah. our from our technology world it's to be in his emotions all the time you know I honestly have to say I would really love to see Barry react to online schooling that would be fun <laughs> could you imagine him trying to do it during during this time oh my yeah. gosh <laughs> yeah it, he would not be a happy camper <laughs> If you could pick any modern show or film that you're personally a fan of to have a crossover episode with the Goldbergs, which should you pick and why? Um, I really like Succession. Succession's really good. Um, I don't know how they would do a crossover. I mean, both family shows, both family. Um, Throw it together and see what happens. <laughs> I gotta tell the powers um about that but probably succession if we could cross over to any that would be cool because that's on hbo and we're a, we're a network show so you know di totally different um but yeah are there any funny moments or stories that you could share from filming any of your favorite memories whenever we're at the dinner table with the family um, so whenever, you know, we were all together, whenever you're, we're with, uh, you know, the whole family, um, that's always, always what was special to me, uh, those scenes. We don't do that as much anymore, 
but you know when we're all at the table and just those those scenes take a while too like because you have to get different angles from every person at the table but it just was always special like when you got all of us there at the table finding our characters this like season one season two you know so there's interesting things that come up when you're doing that um but those are always actually the, this the karate karate episode when we're sitting at the tables and they're throwing bread rolls at me like that scene always sticks out to me because that was the beginning and we were all together in that scene and um it was hilarious and i think we found our 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 way kind of there and you know what i mean so always when we're at the dinner table every at all the goldbergs that's that's my favorite imagine those are the hardest scenes for you to get through sometimes because it's like you guys are just making each other laugh <laughs> yeah. and they're long too so we have to like you know get comfortable there and you know it, it's just the whole thing it was just always I always found comfort in that yeah uh, do you have any comfort episodes or one you just cannot stop laughing and never get sick of watching um I love new kids on the block yeah. It's on the block. Um, that was a great one. <laughs> that's a good one. Oh my gosh. Would you guys recreate the music video too? <laughs> that was really fun. Karate, the way the arc of that episode and how like, you know, Haley singing, you know, me acting like crazy with the karate and just like the physicality that they found there too is just like that's another one where I think we found our formula and we we capitalized on it. So those two, Karate and uh, New Kids on the Block. I have to say the, the Dinner with the Goldbergs. I dinner never stopped laughing. Oh my gosh, you guys were so funny in that episode. <laughs> yeah, that was, oh my gosh, a while ago, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, what do you love most about the comedy genre? I love how, I love comedy. Like I love making people smile. I like making people laugh. Um, I just, there's so many different ways you can do comedy. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just always, just comedy's always been more my thing, I think. So whenever you can make people laugh with, you know, just being yourself or, or, you know, taking things and making them different, you know, just any way you can just deliver the line or, you know, put like, make it physical or, you know, just, you could do so much with it. And it's not boring, like drama. Drama can be really boring. Comedy, yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? There's, there's, there's a lot of ways you can do it, but like comedy, there's so many ways you can do it. And it, it, it's on, and that feeling is on set too. Like we're a comedy, we're making a comedy. Like, you know what I mean? We're not making a drama. So it's, Happy universal. Vibe. you know what I mean? We're all laughing. Our crew is literally the best crew in the world. They are, I mean, you would think, you would think we're not a single cam show and we're a multi cam show with a laugh track, the way our, our crew is with us and how comfortable they make us over these eight years. And, you know, it's it, it's really universal to our success. So, yeah. Um, and lastly, what is the best piece of advice you've received, whether that's acting or personalized, something that sort of stuck with you and you try to live by? Um, always be yourself. It's always got to be yourself, you know. And uh, yeah, I mean that's that's what I try to do. You know, being it's it can get complicated when you're an actor and stuff, and you know it's um, a lot of um, people you meet and stuff like that. But you always got to just remain true to yourself and know that know what you're here for, and know that you know just be passionate about what you're doing, and you got to care and you gotta you gotta enjoy it. And things aren't always going to be easy, but you know it's just yeah, finding that passion really too. Thank you so much again. It was such a fun time getting to talk with you and I hope you have a great rest of your day. You too. All right. Bye, Troy.
Take care.